Welcome to Manchester for a Christmas cracker of a derby. City at home to United. Both teams challenging for places at the top of the table and it's always a lively affair when they meet up. Their first game in the top flight in the Women's Super League for this Manchester United women's team. Old rivals together for the first time. Great shots from just outside the 18-yard box. A good cross. This is a real chance. Oh, it almost found Jane Ross. Oh, a second for Manchester City, and it's Coombs who's got it. Oh, what a goal. Manchester United get back into this. Tom down by Ebbs. Oh, it's going to go in. That is outrageous from Caroline Weir. Rousseau, oh, it's superb. Oh, that's not a match right. Super save, and it's in from White. Cleverly done, and surely she's won it. United still can't beat them in the WSL. one nil to City when they played here at the Etihad back in 2019. Amazing to think that was United's WSL debut. Today, more than 40,000 fans are expected here for this one. And the blue carpet has been rolled out for the City players. They've won their last nine home WSL matches, scoring 33 goals. Manchester United, though, they've never finished above City in the table. But the Reds are off to their best ever league start. England star Alessia Russo has now scored in her last three WSL matches as she returns to full fitness. So it's Manchester City against Manchester United in the Barclays Women's Super League kickoff in just over 10 minutes. And I'm delighted to say, a big game needs some big, big players. Farrah Williams alongside me and, of course, England, former England and Brighton manager, it is Hope Powell. Good afternoon to you both, ladies. Good afternoon. Big occasion here, Farrah, and a big occasion where the girls can't get overwhelmed with this. They know they have a job to do, but these are two teams that are in great form. It's going to be a cracking match. Yeah, for sure. It's a, a, massive, a massive occasion and it's what the women's game is becoming used to. The atmosphere is starting to build here now, but it's as if, it's as if they plan this. It's as if they plan this game. Both teams coming into this game, you know, you know, with momentum, as you mentioned there, City 9 unbeaten, Man United just beating Arsenal, so beating one of the top teams and they haven't done that in previous games. If City win, they go level points. If United win, it takes them six points clear of City. So big, big game, big occasion. I'm excited for it. And these are the games that matter when we're looking at points at the end of the season, Hope. It is about making sure that you're on your top game here. And momentum is key, especially for a team like Manchester United coming into this. I think so. Momentum key for both teams. I think Man City, it's a must-win game, I think, for them to stay in contention. Obviously, Man United win. They're closer in terms of the top um, top of the league, Champions League, and that's what it's all about. So a big, big occasion, big game today. And it's also, like you say, just keeping your head. What are you saying to some of the girls now in the dressing room as they come out here, knowing that this is a huge occasion, some of the fans are going to be are going to be absolutely loving this? Yeah, I think the man both managers will be saying, don't let the occasion get the better of you, stick to the game plan, you know, do the stuff we've been practising in training and really stay in the moment. It's a big stadium today, 40,000 people. You could get carried away with that, but stick to the occasion, stay in the moment. Well, we can hear from both of those managers. They were speaking to a very croaky voice, Joe Curry. Well, all games are vital, but I think, you know, obviously when you're going up against teams that are challenging up and around you, these become a little bit more important, um, especially only in a 22-game season, as I mentioned previously. So, yeah, of course, I think it's important to try and get the win today, um, but I think regardless, we're going to enjoy the experience. It's the final league game of 2022. It's in front of the TV cameras. It's at the Etihad. What do these moments mean to you and the players? Well, I think it's great, first and foremost, you know, to have it here in this setting with really good support behind us. And I think um, it's a good spectacle for the women's game, for sure. The beauty is that uh, as we get more experience, I have to say less and less. Um, I think it's just about defining, redefining where the energy goes. And look, there are going to be moments today with a very good team like Manchester City that have the ball and we've got to stay compact, we've got to stay connected. Um, but then when we get the ball, we've got to hurt them. And I think, look, it'll be a great game, I'm sure, for the, for the neutral. Um, but we're going to absolutely give everything we can to try and get the victory here. There we go. As the crowd starts to build up, both sets of fans in this magnificent stadium. 
And it's going to be a game to be able to relish. And both managers there, you could hear them hope, speaking about the fact that they're coming in and it is a game to win. And so much is going to be said off the back of that. I think so. Both managers will want to win this game. I think um, sets them up for the league. I think Man City more so. If they lose today, they're trailing, they're further behind. Man United win today, it keeps them right up there. So a must-win game for both both managers, both teams. And one player tonight, which today we're going to see is Maya Letizia, someone who you know Hope is very, very well. She was at Brighton, started her career then, obviously now she's here at Manchester United. What is it so special about her as a player that everybody seems to be really excited about her? She's definitely a talent. Um, made her debut very young, played every minute um, WSL when she broke through. Um, a, a super athlete, super tackler, super, super distributor. Um, and a really good signing for, for Man United. And then for you as well, Farah, someone who you're quite excited about, you know, made her England debut just a month ago and, and people are right to be excited about her. Yeah, she's an exciting young player. I think Hope, you know, when she played at Man Man uh, sorry, at Brighton with, under Hope Pass, she played as a fullback. She had to learn how to defend, that exposure. Now she's a more disciplined defender. Playing centre-half, she's able to read the game a little bit better and make better decisions. I think you can see it even coming out with the ball. Here you see in possession of the ball, she has a range of passing. I mean, this is a, an excellent pass to set her team on their way, but she's somebody that I think she's developed well under Hope Power. I think in terms of the release, allowing her to go to a bigger team and really you know, put herself on a different platform, she's exciting. She's done really well this season for Man United. And that's always challenging, isn't it? When you've got someone like Maya, you don't want her to go, but you know actually for her to be able to fly, this is where she needs to kind of be. Yeah, we kept well to keep her last season, to be honest. Um, it was always a matter of time. And I think she's come in and she's really pushed on in her game. Can play centre-half or full-back and one for the future, I would suggest. OK, well, another young defender who is very, very much a lifelong fan of City is Esme Morgan. Who better to give Joe Curry a guided tour around the Bluesies ground? It's a real one club mentality here. The, the men train here, the women train here. What does that say to, to the women's team that the club as a whole treat you like that? I mean, we feel really important, which is good because you can sometimes go away on England camps and not every player feels the same at their club. There'll be times throughout the season where Pep will just pop down and be stood at the side watching our training session, so everyone works a bit harder then. <laughs> You've been absolutely flying this season. It comes off the back of that awful leg break last year. When I had my time out last season and I was absolutely not able to kick a ball around. I think I realised how much I took it for granted, sort of being fit and healthy and able to play every week. That leg break, you're on the ground, you're clearly in a lot of pain. As they're getting you onto a stretcher, you get yellow carded all at the same time. I knew straight away that I'd broken my leg and then the ref sort of came over and went, you're going to need to stand up. And I actually laughed out loud. I was like, I can't stand up. Fancy giving me a little bit of a tour. I'll do my best. Manchester Derby, the big one is coming up and that is being played there at the Etihad. What does it mean to you of all people? I think you can probably tell from the smile, just the prospect of it just makes me grin. I'm so excited. I've been to hundreds of games here as a fan over the years. What is the rivalry actually like then? I mean, I was brought up on the song, if you hate Man United, clap your hands, to which I would rapturously <laughs> clap. Me and my family used to walk across this bridge before games when we were coming to watch, and we called it the Bridge of Victory, because every time we walked across this bridge, City won. Here I am. <laughs> How often do you come and just stand here and go, oh yes, there I am? I don't stand, but I always drive past in the morning on the road and sometimes I'll give myself a little wave and just say, morning, Es. <laughs> and this is pretty cool. I mean, we think about some of the players that have got changed in here over the years. This must make you quite emotional. Yeah, I don't think cool quite does it justice, to be honest. Um, as you say, the superstars who've made history at this club, who've sort of got ready and prepared for those massive matches in here, it's got a strange aura to it. Yeah. Like, you have to be ready for greatness. <laughs> but what does it mean to the team to have these big games, these big moments? in the big stadium. It's deserved really for us to have these sorts of opportunities. The interest in the game has just skyrocketed and it feels almost apt that we can have an opportunity in arguably this club's biggest game of the season playing against United. 
Gareth gave you the captain's armband. <laughs> that must have been such a proud moment for you. My mum and dad were in the stands and my mum said after the game that all my family of blues going down the generations would be so proud. I used to sit in that block up there and would look down and scream the players. I cried when we conceded last minute goals and I've been through all the emotions with City in this stadium. And to be able to experience one of those sorts of moments for myself would be an absolute dream come true. I think I could retire happy then after that, to be honest. Farrow, it must be so nice for her as a lifelong fan to be part of this. She's on the bench today, but definitely one for the future. And some people even tipping her to be potentially England captain one day. Yeah, and I see that in her. I think she's a she's an intelligent young young uh, lady, and she's also very mature in terms of her performance and how she plays. You heard her speak there about suffering that injury, and she kept her out for a while, break to the leg, and she's been out. And obviously, trying to then get back into this, you know, strong Manchester City team is difficult. But her captain in the team the other day, and I watched the performance, just so mature in what she and how she delivers and how she plays the game. So she's got a bright future. We've seen her for the England as well. The Lionesses, you know, recent in recent fixtures, and I think in those games as well, she you know she done herself credit. Brilliant stuff. OK, well, the teams will be out very, very soon. There's plenty of names to be looking out for today. Another name, Hope, is, is, is Lauren Hemp. She's actually starting today as well. Must be really confidence boosting for her. Yeah, really good to see her back after a spell out. A, another young talent. Um, 1v1 situations, love to take those defenders on. Really excited to see her play today in front of this big crowd. OK, well, plenty of fireworks, I'm sure, for this huge game in Manchester. So it's time to say a very good afternoon to our commentators, Rachel Brown-Finnis and first, Robin Cowan. Good afternoon, ladies. Good afternoon, Jeanette. Hello, everyone. A Christmas cracker to conclude the first half of the WSL season. A Manchester derby at the Etihad in front of a crowd of over 40,000. United have never beaten City in the WSL. They've never finished above them in the league. After so many near misses, could this be the year United pip City to the Champions League places, or perhaps even the ultimate prize? For those who have wrapped up warm and made their way to the blue side of Manchester, this is all set up to be an incredible game in the top flight of women's football. Well, Manchester City are on a six-match winning streak in the WSL. Another victory today would see them move level on points with their City rivals. One change to the side that beat Brighton in their last league fixture. Lauren Hemp returns after recovering from a thigh injury. Khadija Shaw, the main City threat, is the league's joint top scorer along with Rachel Daly with eight goals in eight league appearances. United have had confidence-boosting wins at the Emirates and Old Trafford in the last fortnight. Mark Skinner names an unchanged side from the 5-0 win over Villa. Alessia Russo has scored in each of her last three at Women's Super League appearances. Ella Toon and Nikita Paris are among the former Blues in the current Reds starting eleven. A couple of players you wanted to pick out, Rachel Brown finished ahead of the derby. Yes, yeah, still holding on to the delight of the summer and they were two superstars of that summer. Chloe Kelly here in our picture, back to full fitness. Uh, an interview that you made me aware of, saying that she's had to have a few games in the WSL to really feel back to her pre-injury best. And she was scintillating in the summer. And to see her even better form for Manchester City fans, that will absolutely delight them. And to have Lauren Hemp, down the other wing today will be a real threat for United, but United spearheaded by Alessia Russo again. Part of that double duo of Ella Toon, Alessia Russo was used so to such great effect in the summer, the women's Euros. Um, Ella Toon and Alessia Russo back to her very best as far as goal scoring form after that start of the season where she had an injury. So we've got two teams with their star players at their very best. Lauren Hemp has missed the last couple of games. Subbed on against Liverpool in the Continental Cup, so it's had a few minutes. A frightening name for the team sheet from a Manchester United point of view. And 
the race for the title and the Champions League places couldn't be closer. The win for City would mean themselves united and Chelsea all be on the same points with Chelsea still to play later on today. The referee today is Abigail Byrne, vastly experienced in the Women's Super League and in the men's lower leagues as well. We're just about set here for action at the Etihad. City have won their last nine WSL home games. They were all over the road, though, at the Academy Stadium. Can they perform in front of a healthy crowd? The home of the men's team. Ahead of kickoff, all players take the knee. Here we go. Manchester United in the red, kick us off up against Manchester City. And the result of this one, this derby day, could be hugely pivotal. Russo immediately on the attack, but the offside flag is up. You can see Manchester United's intentions right from the off. So stretching that left hand side, left central side. Fractional, marginal decision there. Time's a run, but yeah, a yard, half a yard, just goes too early. She's got great speed, Russo, as long as uh, as well as 10 out of 10 in top trumps in pretty much every other department. A rivalry that's growing, simmering slowly. As Manchester United have only had a senior team in existence since 2018, and they've yet to get the better of their city rivals in the WSL, but. Speaking to those who've been following the women's game, especially this season, the past couple of seasons, they will never have a better chance. Won their last six games in a row, Manchester City, but United after that stuttering start for City. A couple of games beaten by Chelsea and Villa. Got things back on track. But Manchester United, they are in the form of their lives. And we were saying beforehand, Comparison this time last year, they would finish their season top, didn't they, at Christmas last year, but their squad depth was far from good enough to maintain that to the end. Their squad depth is phenomenal now, Manchester United. Paris manages to keep hold of that. Back to Mayor Letizia. Made an impressive start to life at United, joining in the summer from Brighton, Hope Albion. Here is Ella Toon. Yeah, certainly Mayla Tissier, young England player for the future, as Hope Powell mentioned. In a chat to Mayla Tissier at Carrington. She said how much she'd learnt under Hope Powell, organisational, what her role is as a centre half, as a full back. They are things that, from my experience of working under Hope Powell, you drilled into you every day. So great for a young player to have that schooling. Mary Erbs, who's not missed a single minute in the WSL since joining United in 2019. Both sides have an excellent defensive record. Zellup. Treed by Greenwood, but clearance is picked up. That's good play. Manchester City, here's Castellanos, Venezuelan international. Elusive play. It's in Kasparai. Big turnover of players for Manchester City. Lost basically the whole of their midfield in the summer. Jill Scott, Caroline Weir, Georgia Stanway, Kira Walsh. So understandable, it took them a little bit of time to get into gear to try to pick out. Leah Galton. Helen White up top as well. Karen Bards are retiring, both of those two, along with Jill Scott, retiring. So certainly that transition word is maybe thrown about, but there's a big shift of players who've been there for a long time. 
Good to see Steph Horton on the bench today and hopefully getting the better of her fitness problems, injury problems. Kasparai, Netherlands International. Yeah, it's a good battle, isn't it, between Kasparai and Leah Galton down the left-hand side. There's Steph Horton still marshalling her team from the sidelines. She assumed that role as captain at City and at England for such a long period of time and grew as a person as well, very much so as a player, taking on that role. United with the great possession, it seems, early on. City trying to be patient and wait for their moment. Russo draws the foul from Alexandri. Yeah, lovely little dink ball in from Mary Earps as well. You can see she just clipped it, knew that Alessio Russo would shield the ball, would draw that foul in. That was the second prize, get the foul or get possession. Mary Earps' distribution we've talked about on many occasions has been absolutely wonderful and something she's improved on massively. Here is Hasegawa, another summer addition. From West Ham United. I'm not convinced that the, the players they lost in midfield are have improved the team with the players that they brought in. Still to be convinced of that. With George Stanway, Caroline Weir, Kira Walsh were three absolutely huge players who played every single week in that three in midfield. Shaw receives, is allowed to turn and make a bit of progress. Pursued by Galton. The first opportunity for Lauren Hemp to have a run. Peter Paris does well to stick to her. United have the ball back with Hayley Ladd. Good, clean challenge from Coombs. Here's Shaw. Turns away from Letizia. Draws the foul. Free kick in a good position. And Buddy Shaw has had her best season yet. Eight goals so far this season, the WSL. Got them all really against teams that they should beat, that Manchester City should beat, and you would expect all-time Jamaican leading goal scorer to accept presence. But there, Mila Tissier gets tight, but too tight. It is a foul. Manchester City get the opening chance of the game. I think United won't be too displeased that Caroline Weir has left City, seemed to just score worldies against them every single time they met. And this would have been probably her domain. It's going to be Alex Greenwood, a former United captain. Captain then to the championship title before moving on to Lyon and then back to City a couple of seasons ago. She's got as good a left foot as Caroline Weir, Alex Greenwood. It is Greenwood, the wall does its job. And looked like it was going on target. Yeah, exactly that, Robin. Well organised by Mary Earps, covering Mary Earps' right-hand side of the goal. And they did exactly that job. Five in the wall, all together, all tall. But another opportunity. Big oh. cheer for Chloe Kelly. National hero. Delivers low, cleared by Katie Zellum. Coombs manages to get the ball out of her feet and find Kelly. It's towards Shaw. Lily Turner gets her head to it. Castellanos stands on the ball. It's a bit messy, a bit scrappy. Good feet from Alexandri. Here's Hasegawa. Trying to get away from Russo. A good, well-timed challenge to concede another corner. A yeah, great feat from Hasegawa, that's what you get from her, tricky player. But a little bit just looking at a player down on the edge of the box for United, but it's a great little turn from Hasegawa, well tracked, as you mentioned, from by Alessia Russo. Perfectly timed, danger territory if you miss timing that. Not too often as a goalkeeper do I want my centre forward trying to tackle, but that was a clean one. In swinger from Greenwood will be dangerous.
It's a dangerous looking ball. Put out of play, another corner kick. Really well defended there. Whoever got the final touch on Abaje or Millie Turner or Mary Earps couldn't see from the scramble. Such a dangerous ball. I think it's Leah Galton actually who flies in and gets the decisive header to go, put it wide. So difficult as a goalkeeper. Again, right on the goalkeeper. Earps does exceptionally well. And is it going to be scrambled away? Yes, it is by Blundell. Mary Earps wanting the referee to blow up for a foul. That was right on her. Yeah, it's well worked from City. They'll have pinned the goalkeeper, crowded that near post area, you knowing the quality that Alex Greenwood can whip a ball in with. And they'll do that time and time and time again. Because any little touch from either player, and that could be in the back of the net. Really well worked by City and well marshaled by Earps. Really good spell for City, this. Confident play, Castellanos. Find Shaw straight to Letizia. Upfield towards Russo. We're not seeing uh, much night get possession of the ball at all in their, their final third. Ella Toon sitting a little bit further away from Alessia Russo, but we need to ride the wave really of this opening 10 minutes. Manchester City at home, they're showing them the respect. A few too many bites from Zellum. Free kick for City. Kate Zellum's been a key player, haven't she, this season as well. Talked about Alex Greenwood on free kicks and corners. Kate Zellum's been hugely effective. Well won back by Golton. Alexandria playing herself into trouble. Here's Ella Toon, surrounded by City shirts. And really excellent play from Golton. The cross is going to be the keepers too close to Roebuck. First bit of work that Ali Roebuck's had to do makes an early decision. The flight of the ball was whipping outwards, but came and collected brilliantly. But good work from Leah Golton down this left hand side. First time, really, we've seen Manchester City attack. Uh, sorry, Manchester United attack. Good to see Ellie Roebuck back fit and in goal for Manchester City. Huge spell out last season. Was formerly England number one, lost a place. Mary Earps has certainly taken her opportunity. Did just run out of play. Coombs didn't keep it in. role of a goalkeeper is to organise your defence, command in difficult positions, and what a punch that is, the final touch, definitely from Mary Earps. You see she's watching it the whole time. You see Chloe Kelly's backing into her. There's no foul in that. She's not jumping, she's just she she's shadowing her, she's shielding her, stopping Mary Earps, having a good jump at it. Does exceptionally well there, Mary Earps. Fantastic goalkeeping, good concentration. Two things that have become synonymous with the name Mary Earps. United have yet to concede from a set piece this season. You can see why. It couldn't have come closer there. Mary Earps, strong, commanding, confident. There is Blundell, formerly of Chelsea. Good uh, front foot pressing from Manchester City. You know, cutting off all the options for Manchester United to be able to play out. There's nothing on other than launch it long from Mary Earps, but that's because of how Manchester City set up, very organised. Very well synchronised as well. Gareth Taylor in his third season in charge at Manchester City has won both domestic cups. He's not really got anywhere near the WSL title. It's Kelly. Checks back, Blundell close to her. 
Uh, she found her home, hasn't she, Manchester United? She ended up, uh, Hannah Blundell, being a bit, bit part player at Chelsea. Moved up north to Manchester United. Being a regular, does exceptionally well here. Gets tight, doesn't dive in, sees her opportunity, gets a little toe poke in. Diffuses the danger. Short delivers. Easy one for Turner, but clearance straight to Kelly. Picked up by Kasparite. Shaw sure, again, strong, confident, finds Kelly. A shot from Castellanos was going way off target. Shaw sure, shining in a Manchester City shirt, getting the game time, scoring all sorts of different goals, as well as contributing in the build-up as well. Yeah, Gareth Taylor switched and changed that number nine position last season so much. Ellen White and herself. Um, I think George Stanway played in the nine at different times, but she has played every single game and will continue to do so. You can see her confidence growing, Bunny Shaw. Paris to two. City doing a good job of disrupting the United rhythm at the moment. Yeah, we've not even mentioned Ella Toon, have we, really, to this point? Usually a hugely influential player. Manchester City have made sure she's not had any possession of the ball. It's Blundell, Russo. Kasparai filling in for what was Lucy Bronze's position. Such a long time, we talked about players who'd left. There's another key one to have left, didn't have a lot of game time because of her injury last season. Another big character that was missed at Manchester City. But Mark Skinner's done an excellent job, hasn't he, since he's joined. They've taken on United after the departure of Casey Stoney, which was a big blow. They've incrementally improved. Here is Wuhabi. Lauren Hemp. It's the second derby taking place at the Etihad. First one was when United were first promoted in 2019. And Caroline Weir Rocket won that one. So often she came up with those blinding winners, didn't she, Caroline Weir? As mentioned before, I think United pleased to see the back of her. We're happy. Oh, pinched by Badger. Harris goes down. No foul. Here's short. Lovely first touch. Just tried to cut it back. Well defended by United. Shaw sure causing lots of problems for Manchester United. She keeps drifting out left, out right, as well as central down that, sorry, down the, the middle leg, typical number nine. She's so hard to track. And you see her press the turbo booster and get away from players. Been impressive so far this game. Castellanos, Dalton, good strength. She had her shirt pulled, boot off. No temperatures to be de-layering, is there? But Golan's been exceptional in this open 15 minutes. Lovely little touch inside. You see Kasparai pulling a shirt there and just catching the back of a boot. Definite free kick. And exactly where Manchester United needed to hold on to the ball and maintain possession. their moment to deliver. Russo lurking in the box, so dangerous in the air. So many of her goals have come 
from headers. It's a great ball from the back. Letizia, Golton, the gentle touch into the box, cleared by Alexandri. Golton once again facing up Kasparai. Getting away from her, that's a good delivery. Essential touch from Greenwood. Lad. Badger. One of the best right backs in the women's game. Spain. That's clever. Zellum inviting Badger forward. Corner kick. Just going to say that everything had been down this left hand side for Manchester United that was good, but that relationship between Ona Badge and whoever drifts out on the right hand side for Manchester United is excellent. Lovely little one two. Good pace from Ona Badge. Excellent tracking from Laura Coombs. He's been integral to Manchester City, hasn't she? And midfield coming up with a couple of goals as well this season. Zellum's delivery Played by Alexandri. Zellum will get another chance here. Lovely feint. Straight to Ellie Roebuck. Stands strong, buffeted. And just keep hold of the ball. Great hands from Ellie Roebuck. She'll be grateful that that ball is there, nestled in her hands. She'll have to come over her own players as well as. Manchester United players up against Millie Turner. Gets it at the second attempt. Got to be a big shout. And like good goalkeepers, they're going to clatter someone in the process. And that player is Keita Paris. Not happy with Ellie Roebuck's intervention. I suspect you're not going to have much sympathy for Paris. Oh, it's great fun doing that. Yeah. I mean, as a goalkeeper, seriously, you, you get your knee up, you drive up. You've got to protect yourself and, uh, you know, if there's any sort of damage, then so be it. Maybe next time they won't get too close to you. But she does really decks. well. <laughs> yeah. And Katie Zellen puts it onto a, what is arguably a weaker foot, a left foot, but puts in a brilliant ball. We've seen some really good examples of goalkeeping today so far with Mary Earps and Ellie Roebuck dealing with balls into the box, commanding, strong, Confident, competent, technically excellent. It's great to talk in positive tones about goalkeeping so far. Lauren Hemp, anticipation rises whenever she's on the ball. Up against Badger, goes for the early ball in. Castellanos pokes her foot out and pokes it wide. So simple, wasn't it, the build-up? Ball out to Lauren Hemp, drives past Onabaje. Too easy from a Manchester United point of view. Doesn't get tight enough, Baje. Can't get anything on the cross. Manchester United are lucky because Castellanos was not marked tight enough. Hannah Blundell, the nearest player, just stabs a foot at it and can't direct it goalwards. Still too close to call this one. Golton just took her eye off the ball. Here is Castellanos with a bit of space to run into. Letizia helping out Turner. Lad. That was composed. Yeah, excellent from Letizia and Katie Zellum, Haley Lad. Tight areas, but look at the build up. Beautiful play from Manchester United. The flag is up against Russo. That looked a tight one. The way they work their way out of that tight space, though, so impressive. Absolutely, and that's why teams do want to, you might say, it's dangerous to do, keep possession of the ball in your own box, but that's why you do it, so you can find a pivot out from midfield. See, so turns inside, slips it through, and you've got through into the final third. And she does go too early, my initial instinct. Well, she was offside, and she did just edge it a couple of times now, unless he so straight off. Good line from City. An error. It's his turn, and now Paris. Oh, Abby just manages to get a foot in. To 
stop that particular United counter. Vlad muscled off it. Kelly found in space. Well done, Hannah Blundell there, gets back, forces Chloe Kelly inside towards her teammates. Ended really well there. into Russo, it's intelligent movement. Didn't have too much support, Russo, not surprising she lost it in that position. Turner into two. Great vision, and that's a lovely touch from Paris. Vital intervention from Wahabi. Paris still going. Shoulder to shoulder, Wahabi took a chance, but that was the correct decision. Yeah, no pulling of the shirt there, just shoulder to shoulder contact, no foul right decision, but lovely build up from Manchester United. Start of Millie Turner, centre half, into the midfield, Ella Toon turned, played it wide to Nikita Paris. And then a good tussle. The Nikita Paris. A positive play from Paris. Good to see her get a run of starts in the WSL for the new club. A miserable time last season with Arsenal. Bolton. Two really technically proficient teams. There's only one occasion I can recall them turning over possession. Um, you know, a sloppy pass out that's been able to be intercepted by another team. Other than that, it's been excellent. Really crisp passing, one, two touch, good movement off the ball. Two on to Golton. Skips away from Alexandri. Two on the outside. Back to Golton. Flowing move. Finished off with a flourish from Leah Golton. The red side of Manchester ahead. It was that sensational build up play that we'd just been talking about, wasn't it? Patient. But the composure from Leah Galton in that final third to pick the pass. Little give and go with Alatoon. Plays it, takes it inside, knows there's no space on the outside, but gets a little head up there, plays it out, looks for the pass back, and has the peace of mind, the composure to take the touch, take the shot off. And yes, there's a deflection, but they earned that with that move. Great interchange of positions from players. Alatoon going out wide. Leah Galton creates the space then for Leah Galton to come central. And there, she didn't hit it first time. I thought she could have hit it first time. Bit of luck with the deflection. But as I said, nothing more than Manchester United have deserved. It could have gone either way, but Manchester United draw first blood. Galton's fourth of the season. She scored eight in the WSL last time. United have won their last seven WSL games when they've scored the first goal. City must respond. They look tidy. Erps has done most of her work from set pieces, though. They do look dangerous in this final third, Lauren Hemp, Bunny Shaw. Chloe Kelly. Hemp receives the ball back from Shaw. Didn't quite get hold of it. And fielded easily by Mary Earps. They're keeping them at arm's length, aren't they, Manchester United? They're, they're dealing with them in front of the, the back line. They're not often letting them get into the box. So that half shot, really, from Lauren Hemp doesn't get... Can't get the angle. She has to open her hip out, can't get the power through the ball. No point can either team switch off at all. Yeah, 
Incidentally, it's also the first goal that Manchester United have scored away to Manchester City in the WSL. The gap seems to be closing. Still a long way to go, though. City, we know, have the quality and the experience and the form. Talking off for Manchester United are one of those teams, aren't they? Second position just behind Arsenal. Didn't think there'd be too much between these teams. It's just been a little bit of magic from a magic player, really. Leah Galton, we've talked about her for all of the years that. She's been at Manchester United, posing problems for Gareth Taylor. See, Mark Skinner be delighted with how that goal was scored. Leah Galton brought in from the football wilderness by Casey Stoney when she was in charge. And it's been a pleasure to have her in the WSL, watching her week in, week out. Huge success with their new club, San Diego Wave, as well. Their first ever season. Yeah, Casey Stoney was a leader as a player, as a centre-half when I played with her. And Farrah played with it. Always knew she was going to go on to be a coach. Manager got the opportunity early on, really, with Manchester United. Can't imagine why she'd want to go and move to California. <laughs> she says with the heated gilet on full blast. Kasparai to Kelly. Castellanos. That's a lovely ball. Good touch from Kasparai. Flag has gone up. Yeah, right decision. She just edged, just fractionally, but Manchester United held their line excellently well to make sure that that was offside. You can see here, just fractionally, but you could see it in the angle that we had just behind the assistant referee. It was offside. Two games for United have been played at the Emirates and at Old Trafford. Now the Etihad, I think Mark Skinner was saying that it has been immensely important getting used to these sorts of stadiums and bigger crowds. Here's Paris. The intelligent run inside. Cross comes in towards Russo. A bit too much on that. Clever play again from United. It really was, and good improvisation from Ona Badge there just to stab it out with her left foot. See here, the build-up's excellent, Nikita Paris does really well. Down the right side, finds Badge there, back, oh, sorry, and then back heels it, just left-footed, not a preferred foot. Ona Badge tries to find Russo. Real high quality game so far, I've enjoyed it. As expected, two teams at the top of their game. And no exaggeration, the result of this one will be pivotal in the race for the Champions League places and the titles, such as the small amount of games played in the WSL, and now the competitiveness of the, the top four at least. really ever been a, a top three hasn't there in recent years and Manchester United have been first to join the party in the race for Champions League football Hemp being pursued by a number of red shirts they can't keep up with it yeah, look around long Lauren Hemp there and there's five United players all around her just congesting the space and that's what you've got to do against a player like Lauren Hemp Give a green grass in front and she's off. So difficult to stop when she's equally comfortable going on the outside, going on the inside. Russo, fantastic play and sets Blondell away. Three on three. Paris wants it. Paris won't quite get there, Wahabi, with the covering challenge. And Wahabi is furious. 
I think furious with her teammates. There was no decisions by the referee. She was cajoling. Got an excellent build-up play. Great holding from Russo. Awareness of the overlapping run of, of Hannah Blundell. And she does excellently well. Just drives down the throat of the Manchester City back line. Slides it through. And it's near perfection, that pass. Just not quite enough pace on it. But that is down to that girl there. Wahabi tracks back excellently. Intercepts brilliantly. Save City. We're talking about big game players. Wahabi has played in the biggest game in the women's game. Over 90,000 at Camp Nou in the Barcelona-Real Madrid game last season. It's exciting times, isn't it? It's the last few years. We've seen that in uh, in, in Italy as well, in, in derby games, in Spain, in England, all using the men's equipment, men's stadiums. Now we more people to get a glimpse of what these players can offer. Dalton tries a sharp turn, went down, not too many complaints. Referee quick to wave play on. Russo in pursuit of Alexandri. Asagawa, good strength, finds Castellanos. <laughs> I've seen quite enough of the City midfield. Coombs, Hasegawa, Castellanos not getting on the ball as much as their red counterparts. Quite as good. City rely on their flanks. Two allowed to run and run and takes aim wide. Just warming up, isn't she, Ella? Two not really seen too much of her. Said that Manchester City have been defensively excellent this afternoon, but here finds the gap getting in between that midfield and the back line is Ella Toon's speciality finding that space, getting the angle receives the ball and runs at them. Can't quite get the finish. Mark Skinner will want more of that from Ella Toon. Castellanos. Toon there, allowed to run a good 20, 30 yards without... It's hard, though, as a, back, as a back line, you've got to retreat. You've got to, you can allow you know, your, your midfield to track back, to put pressure on, and you know that at some point she's going to have to shoot, and you start to put the brakes on as a back line, went around the edge, edge of the 18-yard box. All of this is usually organised by the goalkeeper. You can see everything in front of them. They did let her have a free shot. She can take advantage. It's so tight, this game. You feel that any mistake would be punished because both teams are sharp up top. Alessia Russo, Bunny Shaw, both in excellent goal scoring form. Both teams have got well equipped set piece takers. Alex Greenwood, Katie Zellen. Manchester City, Manchester United. All threats from all over the place. Here's what else is coming up for you on the BBC. Women's football show tonight, 25 past midnight on BBC One and on the iPlayer as well, if you don't stay up that late. All the goals from the games of the WSL today and on Wednesday, the semi-final, the World Cup on BBC One. France against every English fan's second team now, Morocco. Speak for myself, maybe, with that one. Absolutely. Really, Tissier has watched Bunny Shaw really well this game, hasn't she? 
Kelly gets a bit of space. Hemp manages to bring it down. And the shot from Castellanos, a fizzer, straight to the ups. It wasn't straight at her. She moved her feet brilliantly and got across <laughs> and made it look like it was straight at her. But uh, I'll forgive you for that, Robin. You look here. <laughs> The strike from the edge, really well held up by Lauren Hemp. You see Mary Oaks gets her feet across to allow, she does mishandle it, her body's behind it. Uses those feet to great effect and makes that look pretty easy. It's been pulled up by the goalkeepers union. I think United, on the whole, they'll be happy with City taking shots from those sorts of distances because Mary Oaks, more often than not, easy for her yeah he'd back a goalkeeper of Mary Epps standard to to save most you know it would have to be something absolutely brilliant spectacular we said that earlier in the half didn't we that Manchester City have not really been able to penetrate that back line get in behind the back line certainly not with any long balls but even with them working it out wide with Chloe Kelly and Lauren Hemp Mona Baje and Hannah Blundell have dealt really well with them stopping balls going into the box with that challenge that is a really entertaining matchup between those two there's not many defenders who can go toe to toe speed wise with Lauren Hemp there probably was some contact on a badge they probably clipped her a little bit I think the feet were moving too fast for the referee to see probably not up to full pelt yet Lauren Hemp had missed the previous four games with a thigh injury before returning in the midweek win over Liverpool in the Continental Cup. <laughs> Kelly, trying to get away from Blundell. It's the final five minutes. Just where United need to stay switched on. Yes, a lack of lapse of concentration from Lauren Hemp there, letting the ball go out, but discipline, organisation, laser precision concentration from Manchester United required to see out this first half Rosella manages to release just in time and United work it really well for Blundell Golton in support Makes room for the cross-in. Corner kick is the decision. It does well to trace and track the run of amazing run of Leah Galton, cutting inside, going outside. Casper stands up really well and makes a definitive block. It's a real confidence, a real air of composure about this Manchester United team but certainly not home and hosed yet Zellum's deep cross away by Shaw City pulling everyone back for that corner crunching challenge but a really well timed one lovely touch from Paris you see what she was trying to do just bounces to the gloves of Ellie Roebuck. That was really clever. She didn't quite come off. Oh, that was threaded through beautifully, wasn't it? And there was Alessia Russo and I think Ella Toon hanging out at the back post. Really well worked. Lovely turn and touch and weight of touch from Nikita Paris. To be fair, both players played offside. Great back line from Manchester City. See what Nikita Paris was trying to do. Five years with Manchester City. Key to Paris, 37 WSL goals, got her move to Lyon. Off the back of that, 
Oh, and that's a, a great pat pass from Alexandri. Roebuck had to deal with that. Trusty goalkeeper on that one. where Mary Earps can use your game management skills. Waste a little bit of time. I don't think we'll see 13 or 14 minutes of extra time <laughs> this half. Unless Kalina has decided to take a trip to Manchester. I think we're safe. She's played that decisive moment, and Julia Galton so far in this game. Brilliant interchange down the left hand side, deflected shot ultimately. All that decides the game so far. Adatu and Russo get a lot of the headlines, a lot of the, the attention, but Golson, such a huge part of this Manchester United team ever since it was founded in 2018. Two minutes of time added on. City drifting a little bit at the end of this first half. Both teams have took care of possession so well. You're doing a lot of chasing. Lovely play from Paris. Lad. Oh, she had a couple of options in the middle there. Well, Manchester United have created the better of the chances. They've got into Manchester City's box far more times than Manchester City have got into United. They just haven't executed that last bit of composure from Haley Ladd, blazing it over. And that's what Mark Skinner will be saying at half-time is, look, this is one of the best teams in the country. You have to take your chances when you're presented with them. Gareth Taylor's got you know, a different job on his hands. They've not really created too much Manchester City. Interesting to see what he does to change the game. Possibly the most dangerous striker in the division. But, uh, she's been kept very quiet. Khadija Shaw. Goal ratio is just ridiculous for club and country, wherever she's been. Yeah, she's still got to prove herself, hasn't she, to, to those who are really looking. Doing it against the top teams, doing it against Arsenal, Chelsea, Manchester United now in that top four. Something she's yet to do. Bunny Short. Sure, it's just a matter of time. Castellanos delivers. Badger. Tempted clearance completed by Zellum. And that is the last action of the first half. Manchester United with the lead at the break. A beautiful move from one end to the other, finished by Leah Galton for her fourth WSL goal of the season. United have edged a fairly even half. Manchester City, Rachel, need to pose more of an attacking threat after the break. Absolutely, they do. The better moves and passages of play have come from Manchester United, very often starting with that player there in shot from the goalkeeper from the back line, playing through the thirds, and then really kind of injecting pace and flooding players forwards. They've got into Manchester City's box more times than City have into United's. And United have almost spurned chances. Manchester City have had very, very few, and when they have been, they've been from outside of the box. Manchester United go into this Half time with a well deserved lead. All to play for on the second half, but it's advantage to Manchester United at the break. Half time at the Etihad, Manchester City nil, Manchester United won. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Robin. What a fantastic first half of football. Farrah Williams, hope. Paul alongside me and Farah, this is really living up to expectations and we can see United clearly in control here most of the time. Yeah, I think we come into the game expecting goals. I think the form in which both teams have come in, 
you know, has been fantastic and lots of goals have been scored. But I think it's been a tactical game. I think how we saw Manchester City set up with a really high press, United in that opening 20 minutes really struggled to get into the game. And then they found a way of breaking that. And once they broke it, they've controlled the second part of the first half really well. And they have done that exactly, Hope, haven't they? They've really controlled it and, and it's so visible to see. Yeah, it took them a bit of time, I think, 15, 20 minutes before Man United actually got into the game. Um, and as Farris said, broke the press. Um, if they manage to do that and continue to do that, I think they'll have greater success. They did really well in the first half by doing that and ended up scoring a goal. And what a goal. That first goal that we've seen today. Farrah, honestly, I, I was holding on to hope, saying, wow, brilliant, the build-up play, Farrah. Yeah, it was really good. We can see it. And Golden down this left-hand side and Hannah Blundell have had a really good you know, connection. You can see here, when Golden picks it up and plays it to tune, the way she just moves off the ball, this touch here from Golden takes two players out of the game. She doesn't just stop. Once she plays this to Ella Toon on the outside, she continues her run into the box. And the touch, the way she just softens her touch and gets her strike away, it's a fantastic finish. But I think you've got to highlight these two, Golden and Toon, and the way they've connected here, Hope. Yeah, really good. Good first touch, as Farris said. Um, but interestingly, Man United really struggled down that side in the first 20 minutes to defend it, and then managed to find their rhythm. Great ball to Galton. Galton's touch took two players, three players out of the game. Fortuitous here with, with the strike, got a deflection, and it's in the back of the net. And a brilliant goal, brilliant goal to really run, break the deadlock. And that's going to give United so much confidence coming out now for the second half. It, it did, and I think it, you know, you can see the reaction with, with uh, you'll see Mark Skinner here. <laughs> his reaction to the goal. It's a bit of a relief because they needed that. And it was just a couple of minutes before that, I started to feel like Man United were getting back into the game a little bit. They started to find their way of breaking that press. And when they did that, these were the results of it. But it was a fantastic goal. And I think Man United have found a way now to beat that press. And I think they're confident with that coming into the second And let's half. have a look at some of the City set pieces here. Chloe Kelly's been taking some corners here. Hope something that you've had, you've noticed in this game. And, yep. and it's really interesting how United have gone to defend some of these corners. Yeah, they've had to. The delivery's been really, really good by Chloe Kelly, I think and you know under pressure in swing of that near near post and Mary Earps to be fair to her does really well there's a lot of bodies to contend with in there but she manages to find a way and she needed to get a touch on that otherwise that was in the back of the net for sure I think that 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 punch there for Mary Earps that will go unnoticed this is a match winning save here in terms of the way she's executed this and, and got above her defenders to actually get a, a fist on it to get it away this was the moment where Manchester City were on top if this goes in it's a completely different game the fact that she gets that touch yeah. gives her team a little bit of confidence and allows them to stay in the game. She it's doesn't touch punch. it, it's in the back oh, of the net. For sure. Yeah. And what, what we have noticed about this first half, like you said, it's been very, very telling in terms of that City were pretty much in control of the first half, then United kind of worked out how to do it. But City's press, we can have a look at some of, of what they've been doing in this first half here. Yeah. yeah, they started off pressing really well, really high, put uh, Man United in trouble, both going for it. Balls played back, next player goes, goes back to the goalkeeper, Bunny Shaw goes, and it forces Mary up to kick, un, you know, uncharacteristically like out of play. Um, but then they managed to break the pest by those through balls, tidy little bit of play, very good composure, built it down the flank, good movement in front, players moving ahead of the ball, which is really important. You know, going ahead of the ball, ahead of that middle press line. And unfortunately, just a yard too early with, with uh, Russo there. Presso. I think what they got, though, on that, once they realised how to break that press, because Toon likes to sit between the lines. She likes to sit between the back, four, the back four and the midfield three. So she likes to sit in that little pocket that's available there. And they couldn't find her. She was getting frustrated. Once they found a way of breaking that press and got Toon involved in the game, that's where you started to see more of Man United attack. Yeah. And what, and, what do, and what do you say to your team now? If you're Gareth Taylor and you're going to dress room now you're coming out there this stadium is absolutely packed with City fans what do you say to your team now? yeah I think he'll be saying take heart from the first 15 20 minutes I think they were actually in control of the game I think they've got to get Lauren Hemp more into the game they've had a lot of success down the right but Lauren Hemp needs to get a bit more of the ball and Bunny Shaw for sure needs to be a bit more involved in the first five ten minutes she was heavily involved they need to find her find her feet get the ball out wide put crosses in the box yeah, someone I thought we'd see a little bit more of in this game Bunny Shaw Farrah Bunny Shaw's been fantastic for, for Manchester City this season. Carried them through games, you know, and brought them back into games with goals. We saw early in that 20 minutes when Manchester City was on top, Bunny Shaw was heavily involved in everything they did. As Hope mentioned, I think that Lauren Hemp and Bunny Shaw connection, when they work well together, they're unstoppable at times. And we saw it in glimpses. We saw in glimpses the way yeah. that Hemp plays into Shaw, follows their pass, and Bunny Shaw either rolls or defends yeah. or sets. When that starts to happen, Hope, I think they can get six. Yeah, and I think you need Bunny Shaw in the middle. I think they got two, Man City got two excellent wide players that can deliver. 
they need to get the ball out wide, get Bunny Shaw in the box and let her get on the end of something. OK, well, today is the final day of WSL in 2022. And what a year it's been so far and what moments we have had. And we've got a documentary for you so you can relive the best bit. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I don't know if I'd go as far as say spiritual person, but I do believe that there is a sort of plan and that things are written out for us and we kind of choose between one or two paths, but most of it's kind of ready and we just have to be bold enough to do it. You might not have thought you were, but everything you've done since you were six has led to this moment. Serena has this unbelievable ability to keep us so calm and some of the highest pressure moments that you'll ever be in as a footballer. She installed a philosophy that we're all straight away on board with. I think most of all, belief came in this team and a really, really strong internal power of wanting to win every game. We generally believed, I genuinely believed, that we could go all the way. We had these players that could just produce these magical moments out of nowhere. I just didn't feel like we were destined to go home. I thought we were destined to bring it home. Deep in my heart, I knew that we had the talent in that team to win it. Well, that documentary featuring interviews with Leah Williamson, Beth Mead, Serena Vigman, and of course, our wonderful Hope Powell. Pretty much everyone, if you're on BBC One on Wednesday, December 21st, after Sports Personality of the Year, it's on the iPlayer as well, you can catch that. And um, Farah, one thing I always remember from that final was your videos on social media, celebrating with the girls, and what amazing moments for the year that they've had this year as well. They've had, a, the Lionesses have had an unbelievable I wouldn't even just say year, just in terms of time under Serena Wiegmann, I think she's brought a different dynamic to the team. The mentality shift within that squad has been fantastic. And yeah, I mean, I was lucky enough to be a part of the celebration, got absolutely <laughs> flawed, was embarrassed, but actually it's a moment I'll never forget. And yeah, as you mentioned, I, I put the clip up and it went viral. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you were lucky, of course, to be managed by Hope Powell, who was, of course, former England manager. And what was it like for you, actually, Hope, watching that? It's fantastic, actually. I think you look at all of those players that have come through a pathway that's, that's been in place for many, many years. Um, what an occasion, what a celebration. I must say, thoroughly, thoroughly deserved. A lot of talent in that uh, current England squad, and I'm hoping next year's World Cup, there, there's more to come. So really, really enjoyable to watch. I know, Farrah, you're always on point with your predictions when we look at the World Cup <laughs> next year. Some of the girls have got a great job to, to go out there and do something special. What could we expect from the girls out there? They're probably in their, in their best moment in terms of, you know, actually having a chance of bringing that World Cup home. It's going to be difficult. I think teams would have looked at what the Lionesses did in the summer, certainly Australia and New Zealand hosting. They'll, they'll like to think they can use their home crowd um, to spur them on a little bit. But I just think they've got this nice arrogance about them, these Lionesses now. And when they're coming up against the top teams like the USA, we saw at Wembley, they had an, an arrogance about them where they thought, I ain't losing this game. And I like that, and I think they need that going into that World Cup. Okay, They're well, bringing it home. It's all to do, all to come <laughs> next year. And that documentary, of course, available for you very soon. In fact, next week after the BBC Sports personality. But plenty of action in the WSL today. Um, four games, two of them have been postponed. You can see there, Liverpool, Leicester City postponed, as are Brighton, Home and um, Everton. That is off. But we've still got... Aston Villa against Arsenal and Chelsea against Reading to come this afternoon and Tottenham against West Ham of course too. And we're speaking about Brighton, um, of course the team that you've managed, team you know very very well yeah. and it's interesting what's happening there at, towards the bottom end of the table and, and what are you thinking when you look away now from what you set out there and where it's going now for Brighton, how do you feel about it? All? Yeah listen I still think it, it's a great club, it um, didn't start too well, recruitment didn't go as planned, for sure they've got some new players coming in in this window that will help stabilise things and push them on, I, th I think they'll be alright, I don't, I don't think they'll get relegated from the league but it is tough. It's a tough gig at the at the bottom, um, but yeah, I think they'll be fine. You know, it, it, got a long way to go till the end of the season and a lot more playing time. And that's frustrating, isn't it? I guess, Farrah, because if you are at the bottom of the table, and we understand about budgets and resource and everything else. It becomes a challenge, doesn't it, to be able to compete with everybody in the league? 
Most definitely. And look, the budgets, in terms of the difference in the budgets from the top to the bottom, it's massive. I don't think you realise it until you're in it. I played with teams up at the top and at the bottom. And you start to understand there's a massive difference. And it's difficult. What the players that are playing in the, the, you know, the, the lesser teams and the teams with a smaller budget, it is tough. It is tough. It, training every single week to go out every week knowing it's going to be a tough game. It's difficult. It's difficult for the managers and the players. But look, Brighton, I mean, under hope, hope you did a, fant a fantastic job there. And I'm sure they'll continue to do that with whoever they bring in next. OK, well, there's still plenty to come this weekend. All the action can be seen here on the BBC. Of course, the women's football show, that is tonight. You can see there, 25 past midnight. And don't forget, we're only 10 days away from BBC Sports Personality of the Year. It's on the 23rd. Can they do that? But don't forget also, France against Morocco. Wednesday, the first of the semi-finals there on BBC One. And um, it is half time here at the Manchester Derby and Jo Curry's busy. She's found someone who's picked up plenty of awards. Yes, Jane Ludlow's trophy cabinet, I'm sure, is fully stacked for your time as a player at Arsenal. But in your current role, Jane, as technical director of Manchester City Women, what were your thoughts on that first half? There's 45 minutes left. That, that's what I say right now. And I'm really positive about, you know, changes we can potentially make in our game and potential, you know, opportunities of players to players to come on. Because I think, look, it's a derby game. I think there's been elements of our game that have been good. But I think our standards and what we've shown over the last few games, we've got a little bit to go today. And hopefully the girls will come out second half and, and show that it's a derby game today. As you say, there's still 45 minutes to go in this game. City had a, a sticky start to the season with back-to-back -back defeats. Since then, six consecutive wins in the league. What's been key to that consistency? Well, look, there's, a, there's been a huge turnover of, of players, haven't there? And it's great, you know, we've got some great talent now in the club. It's just a case of they're building their relationships. And now you're seeing the fruits of that in the previous games. And look, I think we'll see in our second half as well. It's great to see these players who've joined us just bedding in, understanding the principles of what we do, how we want to play, and obviously their teammates. And that's definitely coming to the fore the last few weeks. Just finally, on days like today, do you miss it? Do you miss playing? No, well, we did have this chat earlier. I said I'd probably kick quite a few people today, to be fair. But um, no, I, I do and I don't. I, I think this is great. Look, the other thing I'd mention is, look at this. Oh, my God, look how far the game's come. Now, the only thing I want to try today is a win. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us. I'll let you go and get warm. Enjoy the second half, Jane. Thanks very much. And would you look at that, is it Christmas or is it not? This is the Santa Dash, amazing scenes here at the Etihad Stadium. Blue Santas, absolutely going for it. They're having a great time. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the team that's had a great time in the first half is Manchester United. This is the story so far. Here we go. Dangerous looking ball. Right on the goalkeeper, Erbs does exceptionally well. Golton, good strength. Back to Golton, 1-0! Fabulous flowing move! Well, Manchester United heading in to this second half with the advantage and hope power like we said they need to maintain the belief that they can come here and do something special uh yes man united they've started very well um, by going in at half time with a goal but i think the second half is all to play for i think man city is still firmly in it um and i predict more goals actually okay more goals that sounds good for our team this afternoon of robin cowan and rachel brown finish is all yours thank you Jeanette. So Leah Galton's goal separates the two sides at the moment. It's really interesting to see what Gareth Taylor has said and any tweaks he might make because City have had their moments as uh, Lauren Hemp struggles to <laughs> get that training top off. But they haven't really threatened, especially they've really started to drift away at the end of the first half. Yeah, and it'd be interesting to see whether that there's more that Manchester City can do or actually you know, is that down to how well that Manchester United have marshalled what they know are going to be the main threats, which are Lauren Hemp and Chloe Kelly, because, you know, the, the full-backs who have been up against them and the midfielders who've got around them and the shielding that Katie Zellum's put in front of the back four has really kind of stumped Man City. So it'd be interesting to see if there's any tactical changes from them. 
in years gone by, United had to be at their very, very best to beat one of the so-called big teams in the WSL. They played it really well today. And that win against Arsenal a couple of weeks ago at the Emirates has done so much for them, not just in terms of actual points on the board, but belief that they can beat the teams you know, jostling for the title. Yeah, because last season was, you know, they, they far improved on, on last season, Manchester United. And Gareth Taylor is Jane Ludlow, Arsenal legend, Wales legend, was saying at half-time, uh, still trying to bed in a huge crop of new players that came to the club in the summer. Going back to Man United, yes, it's part of the Man United up with momentum, but certainly the summer success that Ella Toon, Alessi Russo, Nikita Paris felt is going to bring a huge amount of confidence to this team. Still trying to warm up, not they? A bit flimsy, the wide players, though, aren't they? <laughs> Goalkeepers, defenders don't seem to feel it quite as much. Well, you have to have gloves on, don't you? Oh, that's really key in keeping you warm. <laughs> Are City going to be a bit more aggressive in the press? They might have played around it extremely well, as highlighted by Hope Powell and Farrah Williams at the break. Brave style of play really paying off for United. City, though, have a, such talent in their ranks. And ball. Yeah, they've got talent in the ranks individually, Manchester City, but surely, certainly the differences, the differences have been the, oh, the team. Manchester United of you know, those sweeping and sweeping runs and interchanges of positions. They seem more fluid as a team, more well connected. Manchester United. the opening two games City but they are more than capable of putting together a good run they're currently on one six wins in a row in the WSL this would be quite a big setback claims of offside against Toon Zellum given away things are opening up here for Manchester City Coombs travelling far Finding Lauren Hemp. Badger doing a good job of holding her up. Terrifying sight when faced up with Lauren Hemp. Oh. Textbook defending from Ona Badger there. Got tight, but not too tight. Watched the ball, kept her positioning, nicked it when she could. So far on, one of the world's best players, Lauren Hemp. She's done an excellent job. Good drop on the shoulder from Alexandri. Or oh. Habi. City have played over the last 10 years really since their inception in the WSL they've had Kira Walsh at the heart of that out ball from the defence they've always used her just in front of the defence as a holding midfielder to get out, turn spray the ball, her repertoire of skills is unbelievable, missing her missing Link Just a little bit too much juice on that pass for Nikita Paris They were out, weren't they, Manchester United? Lovely quick feet from Russo. So 
stays like this. United will be level on points with Chelsea. They do play later on. Difficult ball for Russo to trap. One back by Ella Two. to turn inside and get the cross in. Golton. Blundell. Oh, and that was so close to an own goal. For Alex Greenwood knew exactly what she was doing. Very self-assured, that header, Alex Greenwood. Absolutely knew what she was doing. Could see the angle of her dive. Takes the ball wide. Checked where the players were. Very competent defending from Alex Greenwood there. And there's a lot of noise when Alex Greenwood moved to City after being Manchester United captain leading them up to WSL. Zellum delivery. Uh, Robot came. Not sure she got much on that. One back well. Badger. City try and spring out but in and Russo's header gathered by Roebuck. Yeah, gratefully gathered from Roebuck because that's who Russo got a little nick on it and Nikita Paris was only a footstep away. See here, recycled really well, Katie Zellum and Nikita Paris had read it well, just too much on that back header. Took it away from Paris. Sends it forward to Paris. Teasing Wahabi. Done well there. Stood up. Yeah, excellent defending there. Again, from Wahabi, who's been phenomenal today for Manchester City. Sprawling by Shaw. Really mature defending there, Mayor Letizia. Knew that as fast as Mayor Letizia is, Bunny Shaw is faster. Gets a body between the ball and her and ensures that Bunny Shaw runs into the back of her and commits the foul. Might hurt, might be a sore one, but it's what her team needed. Manchester United, more points, wins and goals after the first eight games of WSL season. Yeah, no, not in any rush to get this started. They know that you know, they've got the lead as and when they get a chance to disrupt any sort of momentum or sparks of hope that Manchester City get, they shall do so. Don't have loads of attacking options, Manchester City on the bench. We did want to mix it up. Blackstad, who had been deputising for Hemp and done a, a very good job. So got Mary Fowler. Yeah, I mean, well, Mary Fowler's a centre forward, isn't she? And uh, But you're right, Hayley Rasso is always dangerous off the bench if she's fully fit. She's been devastating against teams down the right or the left-hand side. You know, that's not been the problem. Her Spanish teammate. Paris. The heavy touch. Out of play from Hasegawa. Hasegawa filling the boots of what we were talking about, Kira Walsh. Who such a huge part of Manchester City's success. So young yet so influential, Kira Walsh and did the same for England this summer. Russo down under the challenge. Free kick for United. 
again. Clever just got a body between the ball and the onrushing defender, Alex Greenwood. You know, the longer this game goes on, that's when City starts, will start to get frustrated, will start to try and force things. And you know, that's, of course, it's a contact sport, but and they shakes the foul. Clever from Russo. Katie Zellum, all five assists so far in the WSL have come from dead ball situations. Floated in. Lad tried to get ahead on it. United still look the more in control of this game. Yeah, they're managing the game exceptionally well. We're using the dead time when it's when we've got the balls with the goalkeeper, breaking up momentum, using all of those skills. Russo takes aim on target, but very far out and also off balance. Yeah, very similar to the the one that Mary Earps saved in the first half. Got feet moving really well, Ellie Roebuck. A bit of a speculative one, a bit off balance, Celeste Russo, but decent amount of power, but not enough power. The Ellie Roebuck has to dive to ground, she can get her feet across, get a ball, body behind it, good goalkeeper. Great ball out from the goalkeeper, Roebuck. Van Kasparai, balls back to Alexandri. And the goalkeeping is in an excellent position. England. Nelly Roebuck, Mary Earps, Sandy McKeever on the bench. Anna Hampton now back playing for Aston Villa. The system's working in that regard. Nicely done from Paris. Badger away from Wahabi. Goal kick. She had to time that right. Yeah, I couldn't necessarily see it from here that it was goal kick. Looked like it was going to be a corner, but no backlash from Badge, so we see here little nick, and of course it does come off Badge. Excellent defending, mutual appreciation of that defensive play between those two teammates at Spain. Alexandre slaloms through the midfield, finds Chloe Kelly, delivers. Billy Turner's there, head of Shaw, picked up by Hasegawa. Kelly. Digs it out, and it's equaliser. Laura Coombs. On the spot to draw Manchester City level. One defensive lapse, and City are right back in this. And Laura Coombs has had a pivotal season this year, playing, starting pretty much every single game, key for Manchester City. But it's Millie Turn who's had such an assured game so far, gets drawn further towards the near post because of the presence of Bunny Shaw. She's in between, can't get any sort of contact on it, whistles past that near post. Laura Coombs does really well to watch the ball and head it home. Nobody tight to her, though. If you're looking from a Manchester United defensive perspective, that first missed header is key. It goes beyond May Letizia. And Oda Baje can't get across quick enough to get any sort of tackle. But you can't argue that Manchester City haven't done enough in this game overall so far to be level. And that's teeing up. Last half hour of a great game to finish. Goal number four of the season for Laura Coombe. She got four in the entirety of the last campaign. Ella Toon wins a corner kick in style. They don't look too happy about that. This is a chance for Katie Zellum. You mentioned all of her assists have come from set pieces. Here's a chance. She looked to score. Roebuck does well to get good distance on the punch. This is where we see what Manchester United are made of. A setback. And they were much the better side. Shaw dives in. 
Badger scurries away, swing and a miss from Ladd for the second time. Easy for Roebuck. Yeah, you could see, though, it's lit a fire in Manchester United, hasn't it? They're annoyed that they've conceded, and they've done so well in the game so far. Swing and a miss from Hayley Ladd. Doesn't get any sort of power behind it. Direction, yes, power, no. Hayley Ladd, not the most prolific of goal scorers for Manchester United. But this is game on. No more sitting off for United. Back on to chasing the game and the win. Still half an hour to go. City have finally perked up. Blocking from Turner. Bolton. Lovely burst away. Castellanos. Needs support, she's got it. Blundell. Forced to check back. Three in the middle. Over the head of Russo. Here's Badger. Great touch, that is, to set up Toon. Off target. Well, you can see the distinctive change in how much United have played since they've conceded that goal. It's been all Manchester United. Manchester City. Wow, look at that for an attendance. And these fans have been treated to high quality football so far. It's a toss of a coin for a winner, isn't it? Worth the trip. Over 44,000 here at the Etihad. Still very much on a knife edge. Asagawa takes that away from Shaw. The manager's prepared to gamble and throw everything away to make his team heroes. Good to see a close down by Shaw. City trying to push a little higher up the pitch now. They take advantage of the damage caused by that equaliser to Manchester United. Asagawa finds Castellanos. Now Kelly. Oh, just away from Herps. Not sure she meant that. That cross nearly turned into a second goal for City. Yeah, I can't suggest that she did mean it, but he very nearly rifled into the top corner. It's a lovely bit of play. Hasegawa was influential in maintaining possession initially. Do you think it's a cross? I mean, just at the last minute, kind of arcs away from that far post. It's one of those, a goalkeeper, you are scrambling and fingers crossed and hoping that has not gone in. Also, can't keep possession. The equaliser has completely changed the complexion of this. Hemp over the bar from Turner. Wonderful defending there from Millie Turner, former teammate of mine at Everton, and she has grown and grown, come back from an unbelievable injury. And what that, turning a ball over from four yards out. Fantastic defending. But you've seen now Manchester City breaching the back line of Manchester United, something they didn't do at all in the first half. Manchester City with the momentum. Once again, United.
able to defend the initial set piece well. Picked up by Shaw. Now Coombs. the game around. Manchester City now with the possession, with the control. Shaw to Hemp. It's Kelly! Oh, I thought it was a corner. So does Chloe Kelly. I'm sure that I'd got a deflection off Hannah Blundell. The strike. Looked on target from Chloe Kelly. Again, really good build-up play. Bunny Shaw, strong, slots it out wide. Lauren Hemp across, goes all the way to Chloe Kelly, and he gets a touch. An excellent defensive touch by Hannah Blundell to sail over the bar, certain corner. But you're right, it's all Man City at the moment. Applying the high press and winning the ball back. Skinner will be thinking about a change to try and turn the tide here. Yeah. Back to Wahabi. Harris wins it back. Ella Toon has Leah Galton making the run through the middle. She picks out Russo. Lovely close control. Russo! Spins wide. Great control from Russo, just sticks to a foot and just jinks left, inside, outside, manages to get a strike. Great build-up play, said about Ella Toon, not being allowed to run at the defence. Oh, and it just sails wide, doesn't it? Ellie Roebuck could be glad of that, but you see how close she gets a body between the ball, shields it, and Alex Greenwood gets down the line of it, makes that goal tiny to aim at. Good defending from City. Flashes from Manchester United to show that they are not done. It still looks fairly vulnerable when losing it in that position. This is still anyone's game. Alexandri. Lovely play from Castellanos. Coombs. Looks it out to Hemp. Wahabi takes over. Hemp delivers towards Shaw. She got ahead to it. Nearly impossible chance. Yeah, the angle of her run and how fast the ball came in at made it difficult for Bunny Shaw. Good ball in from Lauren Hemp. Yeah, I'm to stoop really low for that Bunny Shaw. With how uh, competent Chloe Kelly is down the right, Lauren Hemp down the left, they look like they're playing the ball in earlier, you know, with that opportunity of breaching the back line, not necessarily taking on their players all the time, just putting the ball in. You want Bunny Shaw to be central in between the sticks. There is Galton, he's been a bit quieter in the... Second half. He took too long to decide what to do. And there's a lovely ball over the top to set Shaw away. All alone. And a good block from Letizia. Game is stretched. Lad challenged by Coombs. Brilliant recovery one, wasn't it, from May Letizia there. Bunny Shaw looked away really to see Odebaje and Blundell all got rounder made it really difficult to get any sort of clean shot had to rush it in the end and a great block as well 
and you want your recovery runs from your defenders to be towards goal first and foremost and then around the 18 address the ball get pressure on the ball Manchester United do that really well Laura Coombs on us midfield counterpart Hayley Ladd just taking her out stopping the momentum for United Manchester United getting ready to make their first substitution Abby sends it forward Coombs on to Hemp Lauren have looking a little bit rusty, not quite a polished performance that we used to see. It's United who make the first change. Nikita to Paris, whose influence has waned slightly. Often Martha Thomas. It's coming on. Another substitute appearance. She's appeared in every single WSL game so far this season, all from the bench. Tough gig when you've got Alessia Russo ahead of you in that nine position. She's gone that right inside. Derek Swap for the keep Paris position wise. Position wise. Let's see if this swings the momentum back in, in United's favour. Here's Ella too. Russo, Thomas with her first touch. It'll be a corner. Good tight touch from Thomas, wasn't it? Got a shot off as Alexandria just dropped slightly. Got a great line of the ball. Covered a goal. Got the block in. But Manchester United know as this game goes on, they have to take a chance if they get it. And set pieces and Manchester United equal goal scoring opportunities. Thomas, another who's such a threat aerially. Zellum. Roebuck gets there, cleared by Hasegawa. Yeah, good commanding goalkeeper from Ellie Roebuck. There's you know, four, five, six players all really coming for that ball, and she gets above them, gets something on it, enough on it. And Manchester City react well to the second phase to clear it. Look, you can see Martha Thomas, Leah Galton, all posing problems as well as her own defenders. As a goalkeeper in those situations, you've got to just keep your eye on the ball, don't get caught up in shoving people. Galton trying to get away. down and eventually the referee has given the decision to the Manchester United midfielder. Yeah, clever from Zalem there. She knew that Buddy Shaw's got the pace. I'm just running into the back of her. Slightly a little bit more after the challenge came in from Khadija Shaw. Signs of a derby breaking out here. Ooh, Studs yeah. on the hand. I'm not sure if she meant that. Sure. No way. It's painful. Badger. Yeah, when it's like one degree outside, those little fingers get pretty sore. Everything hasn't it? has been fire, it's been feisty, it's been quality, there's been mistakes, there's been quality. Passages of play, build up, absolutely everything you'd expect from a derby. As we approach the final quarter of an hour, expect that to go up another notch. Do 
don't think either side will want to settle for a draw, though it wouldn't be disastrous. It would be Manchester City's first draw of the season, wouldn't it? And it wouldn't be disastrous, but they are fully committed to keeping this winning streak going. Great ball for Badger. First time ball. Also over the top. Got a crosser marker. Couldn't keep it down. Yeah, she did well, really, to get as close as she did. Leia Alexandri marking her tight. Leslie Russo in an offside position from that ball played down initially, but not to her, so irrelevant. Gets herself in the box and well marshaled by Alexandri. Attendance announced at the Etihad. Brilliant, wasn't it? Walking in and seeing the streaming, uh, st uh, people streaming in, families and friends, and just the, being a real kind of festive atmosphere. Reds and blues together. Also treated to a Santa sack race at half time, which was hugely enjoyable. <laughs> One that went down a little too easily for me, though. Yeah, VAR, no contact. Shaw gets the cross in, and then Hemp. Bolton there to make the defensive header. He's made some key defensive headers. They got the goal for Manchester United, but her role as a defender, she's really exceptional at heading. You just feel like if it stays like this, or if Manchester City get another goal, it'd just be a quite a big setback for United in terms of psychologically. They've been the better team for most of the game. Still can't get one over on their City rivals. Here's Shaw. Back to Hasegawa. Now Kelly. Hasegawa digs it out. Coombs wins it. It's given straight back to Lauren Hemp. Badger with the block. Pressure mounting on the United back line. We're happy. No one out to her quick enough. Shaw! Sure! Erps gathers just. Wow, that was a close one, wasn't it? Excellent build up play. Not enough pressure on the ball. Martha Thomas way off the position she should be. Oh, and it's a bullet header, isn't it, from Bunny Shaw? You see, Mary Epps is watching it all the way. Goalkeeper Union or not, that's definitely not over the line, and she does exceptionally well to get her body behind it and recover. Grasp that gratefully. That's the most clear-cut chance that Manchester City have created other than the goal. <laughs> Intimate attention for her trouble. Blundell. Here's Galton. Got the United goal. Oh, fantastic save from Roebuck. To deny Martha Thomas from point blank range. I requested a carbon copy of what happened a couple of minutes ago, and there you go, it is exactly that, but from Manchester United, and what a golden opportunity. Brilliant ball from Leah Golden, picks out Martha Thomas between the two defenders, gets a clean header on it. Excellent positioning from Roebuck. Oh, just, that's exactly why you've got to move your feet, is so if you can't get your hands out, your body's there, and James at the second, it's so open. Great run from Short. She pick out a teammate, not quite. Castellanos couldn't take the ball in her possession. It was a brilliant pick out from Bunny Shaw. Castellanos should have done better there. Yeah, it was pinged at her, but they've got the quality to control it. Really open game. Ten minutes to go. 
Kelly. Manchester United getting ready for their second substitution. Zellum took one too many touches, that's well won back by Castellanos. Shaw. Kelly forced back to Hasegawa. Wahabi. And here's Dana Castellanos. Beautiful in towards Shaw. Just didn't quite get the power on it. It's a brilliant movement from Bunny Shaw to get in between the defenders. You see here, Castellano, she can see who she's aiming for. It's Bunny Shaw all day, got between the left back and Millie Turner, left centre half. But she's just falling backwards as she's aim as she's heading it, can't get the power on it. Two chances now for Bunny Shaw. And United defensively look retired. Could put, still pose a threat, though, in attack. Bolton again, trying to get something going. Here's Blundell. Now Zellum. Delivers towards Thomas again. Oh, the better ball was... Alessia Russo had checked to the edge of the box. She was free. Susan trying to catch United cold. Oh, and Hems touch lets her down. Oh, the gaps between the units now are huge, aren't they, on the counters? They just can't get back either team, really, to close the gaps and make it difficult to play. Those players who like space in front of them are taking this opportunity. Strength and trickery from Golton. And then soon, Blundell surging down the left. Turnovers. Coming with a little bit more frequency now. Good pressure from Thomas. Alessia Russo coming off. Lucia Garcia. United, straight swap, down the middle. She's a tidy, rapid player, Lucia Garcia. It's up to have to bring up. Chases this one. Good strength to win it back from Greenwood. Tries to play in two. Garcia means business. Exactly, she's just told that whole city back line what she's on to do. Badger skipping away from Hemp. Thomas. Badger. It's a back from Hasegawa. Pull back, really well defended by Castellanos. The perfect position. Hayley Rasso coming on for Manchester City. Chloe Kelly withdrawn. Rasso is rapid. Yeah, well, with the game opening up, gaps appearing, you want to take advantage of the counter, and Hayley Rasso is absolutely brilliant at that. Absolutely rapid. Pumps a long ball forwards and she'll chase it, she'll chase everything. She'll harry Man United in possession. Can either team get a winner? 
Mojave forced into conceding the corner. Into the final five. Well, City have switched off. It's 2v1 on the corner if they were to go short now, early on. Sell them once again. Off target. From this right hand side when Katie Zellum, she wants to be on the other side and in swinging in. If you've not got a left foot, which City don't for a corner taker, try something different. Owner by JL, a team on the edge of the box. We're pinging it straight out to it. Russo straight into the action, plays in short. She's not had her best game today. from Leah Goldson. <laughs> Timely slip from Blundell. Rasso fires it in. Shaw's there. So is Hemp and Coombs. It's a mess. And then eventually the foul is given against Khadija Short. A real scramble. It's great to watch though, isn't it? Two teams absolutely desperate to defend their goal, desperate to score a goal and putting their bodies on the line. Excellent headers there. See Martha Thomas gets clattered by Bunny Shaw. But was willing to do that. Bunny Shaw has been an absolute handful today. Settle for a draw here. Oh, that was all teed up for an Ella Toon special. 16 yards out. Well defended from City, but great breakaway from Manchester United. Alexandre, who has the energy, who has the inclination to try and go for the win here. Golton, lovely turn. Still going, Golton. Here's Garcia. United still looking the more purposeful. Lad, excellent strength. Tries to lay it off the Badger, but Asagawa tracks it well. As we approach the full time whistle, Rachel Brown finish your Barclays WSL player of the match. Well, defensively, Ona Badge and Hannah Blundell have been excellent up against Manchester City, but she has done both, both ends. Leah Galton. Defensively, has been there when required, got the goal for Manchester United and is, to this very second, still remains Manchester United's biggest threat down that left-hand side. Covered every blade of grass, Leah Galton. Shaw needing a minute here. Four minutes. 
time added on. Yeah, just I think it is. There didn't seem to be any obvious injury. I think just taking a moment to just clatter her on her left knee, really. There. But both teams know the next chance needs to be taken. Greenwood sends it forward. Madri gets her head to it. Thomas tripped. A few tired tackles, aren't they now? Late. She has a huge amount of intention from Lauren Hemp there. See her, she just cuts off. It's just a follow through, isn't it? Definite foul. Should have been a yellow card. Lauren Hunt trots away without sanction. Time ticking away. Do they? Shot up the shot. Go for the jugular. Garcia. Masagawa's lost her boot now. Have time to retrieve it and put it back on. Oh, Roebuck has played her team into trouble here. It's Golton, it's Garcia. And a game saving challenge from Alex Greenwood. was fabulous defending Alex Greenwood. That was a certain goal without her intervention. Looks like she's got clattered in the process. But as we've said throughout this game, both teams have put their bodies on the line to defend that goal. It's a slack ball from Ellie Roebuck. We thought Ellie Green, uh, Leah Galton, great ball in. And Manchester United, Shouting for a penalty. You can see as Alex Greenwood lands to the ground. She unintentionally. It's not a penalty. It's not handball. It does touch a hand, but with the laws, it doesn't equate to a handball call. Great defending from Alex Greenwood, full stop. Oh, what a chance. We suspected it might have been a mistake that would be the winner. Lovely play from Rasso. City's turn to threaten. Hemp. Thirty seconds to go of stoppage time. Ball down the channel. Hasegawa. That might just be that. Well, what a game we've witnessed, eh? Been brilliant quality. And in true festive spirit in this last 20 minutes, they've given us real quality, exciting football. A gift for everybody here watching this. It's been excellent. It looks like time has defeated both teams. All over. Manchester United's wait for a win over their city rivals continues. They took the lead, but they couldn't hold on to it. Leah Galton finishing off a fantastic Manchester United move, but Laura Coombs stepped in to save City and rescue a point. Could be vital come the end of the season. Nothing to separate the blue and red of Manchester at the Etihad. Full time, Manchester City won, Manchester United won. Ferocious, fast, furious, everything you would want.
from a Manchester derby. Farrah Williams, Hope Howard alongside me and Farrah. This lived up to expectations. What we expected to see, we got today. Two quality teams, quality football. It was a great game, great spectacle for the women's game. I think, as you mentioned there, both teams had their chances. Momentum continuously shifted between the two teams. We thought there, sitting in the last 10, 15 minutes of the game, that either team could have nicked a winner. But I think on the balance of play, I think both teams will be satisfied with a point apiece. And that's the thing, being satisfied with that. But they're both winners. They want to go out there and push on. So there will be questions about how some of those chances may not have been converted, Hope. Yeah, I think um, yeah, I think they'll both be happy with, with the point. I think probably Man City less so really needed to win today. Some missing chances at the end. Kadisha Shaw had a, had a couple. Um, unlucky not to, to score, but a very, very entertaining game. Inter entertaining indeed. Let's see what that then does to the WSL table. You can see there Chelsea still at the top. Manchester City, they're in fourth with 19 points. Arsenal in third, 21. Manchester United, 22. Arsenal there again in hand, but it was the equaliser, wasn't it, Farah? That we we knew that at half time Manchester City had to maybe change a few ideas. They did exactly that, and the momentum really did shift. It did, and Hope said it at half time for Manchester City to get back in the game. They need to get the ball into wide areas, Bonny Shaw more centrally, and put deliveries in, and they did it here. It's a great delivery, but I think this goal comes because Bonny Shaw is in the area. You'll see it here; she's highlighted. The, the, the centre half is so worried about Bonny Shaw, they both get drawn to her, which leaves spaces for midfielders like Coombsy to then drift into. And it's a great header. She's, you know, she's heading it pretty much into an empty net hole. Yeah, I think Maya was too worried about Bunny Shaw when she should have perhaps stayed more central to deal with Coombs. And credit to Coombs, she, you know, executed very well under that sort of pressure. That's the main thing, isn't it? Sometimes you do fig you figure out so much about one particular player that actually you forget there's someone there that can create those kind of chances. Absolutely, which, you know, credit to Bunny Shaw. She drew two players with her and left the space for Laura Coombs. But, you know, Maya Letizia will have to learn from that going forward. She will indeed. But in the first half, of course, there was that first goal as well for Manchester United and they're going to take positives from that to know that the gap is closing Farrah this is something now they can look at and be so positive about I think so I think that they, they've shown today in this game definitely the gap between you know United and that top three is definitely closed as I mentioned there was times in, in the game where Man United had all of the momentum and probably took, should have took advantage of that and gone ahead they didn't and when you do that against good teams like Manchester City you always allow them back into the game hence why the game finished the draw but certainly lots of positives from Man United to take from this game I thought you know they certainly were the team certainly in the first half that probably pushed to win the game more than Manchester City as I mentioned earlier, draw was probably even on the balance of play. Yeah, yeah. I thought Man City did really well actually in the second half. I think they took the momentum. I think then it swung back to Man United at the end. But I, I think end-to-end -end stuff, both teams wanted to win. OK, well, it's been a brilliant, brilliant game, as expected. It's been absolutely fantastic. Thank you, Farah. Thank you, Hope. And what a year it has been 2022 for the WSL. Plenty more to come in 2023. Hope you enjoyed it. We certainly did. See you next year. Merry Christmas. A Manchester derby at the Etihad. Here we go. Back to Golton, 1-0! And it's equaliser, Laura Coombs! Sure! Wow, that was a close one, wasn't it?